previously on the battalion with the crew of Engine 5. Hot. Very hot. Uh, dude, there was a lot of heat there at the door. So it was slow going until we got some holes in the uh, in the roof there to help vent some of that heat, get some of that heat out of there so we can make progress and put it out. Located in the Central Valley of California, the Fresno Fire Department, established in 1877. Fresno Fire Department is one of the oldest departments in the United States, rich in history and tradition. Today on the battalion, we start this 24 of a 48 hour shift at the very busy Station 5. Zippy, the firefighter engineer on Engine 5 at this morning's fire, has gone for his captain's test. And Captain Wanless is out for a few hours. Firefighter Alvarez is behind the wheel and Firefighters Downs is sitting in for the captain as they were heading for the market and a call came in. A smoke alarm has gone off at a local pizzeria. They arrive on scene. Engine 5 is told to hold. Truck 19 is on scene and the crew is pulling their ladders off the rig. Truck Company 19 throws their ladders to gain access to the roof. Battalion Chief Escobedo arrives on scene and circles the building to the front entrance. Firefighter Alvarez has parked the rig in the center of the street. The parking lot is filling up fast with apparatus. The crew of Engine 5 has been requested to join the other crews. Probably an electrical fire inside the walls and it's extending down uh, from the east toward the west. It's in the walls. So they're going to cover up before they actually drop any of the walls or ceilings to protect their property. What we're doing is we're getting the truck company up in the attic to make sure nothing else with that direction. But this has been smoldering for a long period of time. Uh, with our thermal imaging camera, we were able to, to see something up there. And so we went in and started knocking that, knocking that down. And it had burned the insulation all the way over to here. So that's why we had to go over that far to make sure. Now we're going to get a truck company up there to make sure that thing went the right way. So it looks like it might have been that junction where the junction box was. Yeah, exactly. Or where the junction box was connected or, there. Or whatever was connected there, yeah. The crew from truck 19 has broken through to the insulation and exposed the location of damage. Captain Mike Bubba Gill explains how the fire started. But as you know right here, there is no ground. 
you know, and you kind of look back over in that box and there's in the ground over there. Probably found a gang nail somewhere in there and uh, they found a place to heat up for a while and then, but you know, there's no way you can tell about these things, especially as the owner of this building because these things have happened so long ago. Luckily they found it um, this morning instead of not finding it and having it uh, go after midnight. At the time of filming, Captain Wanless was the president of the Firefighters Union. Part of what he does, representing the union, is attends many of the charity events being produced by the fire department. Today is one of those days. More than 4,500 people gather for its annual mud volleyball tournament. My name is Jeff Ferradoni. I'm with the uh, Local 753 Fresno City Firefighter Association and uh, this is our 18th annual mud volleyball event. We host this event for the uh, local March of Dimes chapter. We put on all the, all the uh, volleyball games for these people so they can raise money for their causes and uh, we have about anywhere from 4,500 to 5,000 people that show up for this one day event. Last year we were luckily, we helped the uh, March of Dimes raise about $75,000 to go for their charities. We've been doing this for, like I said, 18 years, we're going on the 19th. Firefighters from the department donated their time and equipment and with a lot of work, created this sporting event for charity. About seven or eight years I've been doing the mud volleyball and uh, we come out here for a week and set up the courts, build the courts, put up the nets, put up the fencing, get everything graded and everything. I think this year we've got like 140 some uh, teams and uh, you know it's just a fun time, get all the families together and everybody's getting dirty and having just a good time so it's for a good cause, March of Dimes. Uh, it's good times. The captain has returned to the station. They finally get a moment to get to the store and purchase their chow for this 48 hour shift that started this morning. Late afternoon, the crew is driving their first dude area, seeing what buildings may need to be checked out when a call comes in as a vegetation fire. The plume of smoke grows as Indian 5 makes their way to the scene. Did you actually have to come out of the fire? I'll need you to come back up the highway and you'll support it today. They arrive on scene to find a fire burning up the embankment of this freeway. We did say something about an hour. Zippy maneuvers the rig down this very narrow dirt driveway, fenced off between the structures and the cyclone fence surrounding the fire. Firefighter Mike Allen pulls a red line for a mobile attack on the fire. He places the hose up and over the side view mirror to keep the slack off the ground while Zippy pumps and rolls. Probably good. Firefighters from Engine 5 are told by the captain to pull down the red lines from both sides of the ridge. The cyclone fence is cut, allowing safer access.
in the Central Valley of California, dry weather is a big issue year round. So plenty of their very precious water must be used to avoid any flare ups that will also endanger the structures on the other side of the road. They use rakes to break up the torched vegetation looking for embers. I want to see who they are. Right. Yo! They got those type threes up there on the right there on the, the ridge. Okay. So they're gonna probably Forest service. they're gonna start lobbing water at us. So just I don't know what they mean by that. No, they don't have a deck gun. They're just gonna pull a fucking red line or a uh, real line. Okay. The older GMC tanker, very well taken care of by the Fresno shop, provides water for the engines when they're on scene of fires in areas that are without hydrants. The news has come down the pipe. Firefighter engineer Zippy, Mike Zimmerman, has been promoted to Watch captain. Watch out, Fresno. It's all going downhill now. <laughs> <laughs> I was crying this whole fire because I was uh, too distraught the idea of uh, him leaving me here. So. He's got promoted to captain. What do, you, what do you think about the new captain here? You know, he's already proven himself. He's just carrying it on. He's doing good. We're proud of him. You guys need to learn how to respect your elders. Not a lot of water. What's up? Firefighter Walbeck takes a moment to quickly down some Gatorade to stay hydrated and get those electrolytes. Firefighter Alvarez uses the deck gun to plummet water across the steep terrain. Battalion Chief Chu is on scene. He discusses the ops with the captain from Engine 5. The engine's tank has been filled, and the supply line has been disconnected and packed back into the rig. You fuck the water in the dirt in? Fuck water in the dirt out here? Engine 9's crew slowly drives along the highway above, using their red hose lines to keep the ground wet. Firefighter Walbeck takes his turn with the deck gun. They work all afternoon and up into the early evening to eliminate any flare-ups.
In Fresno, like many departments, after a long day or night on the fire line, the crews left behind take their rehab time and get food and water brought to them to the incident. Brad, the courier Richter, is a volunteer and provides many services for the department, including delivery of some great barbecue sandwiches. And we had a fire that uh, was in this embankment along the side of the freeway. We had a bunch of brush, wood chips, uh, dry grass. Um, we had about seven rigs, a water tender here. Um, we had a, a strike team of Type 3, 4 service engines uh, en route to another fire up here in the Sierras. Um, they were passing by, they stopped, and uh, they helped us for a little bit, and then they went on their way up to the uh, fire they were assigned to. Uh, it took us about, I think we're about three, four hours now into this. This could be the last fueling. Back at the station, Zippy, now Captain Mike Zimmerman, refuels the engine. residential fire for engine 1518, truck 410, battalion 1, zone 52604, Bailey Avenue, between Preston Fossil Square, 240 South Bailey Avenue. Later in the night, engine 5 receives a call from dispatch. It's a residential fire in progress. Calling party, so she couldn't get out of the house, too much smoke, phone went dead, house filling with smoke. RPC displaying the smoke in the garage. Operations on fire channel one first after right assault. Scene will be fairly IP. They arrive on scene to find a home that has recently been extinguished by the other engine companies. The captain and his crew are requested to help salvage the homeowner's property. Captain checks in with the battalion chief. Once again, this is another point that makes us such a great department. They really do care and respect the homeowner's contents and personal items. They may look burned up to us, but may be a part of a treasured memory for this family. The engine and truck companies have completed salvage. The crew from Engine 5 head back to their rig. 